November 4th, 2021. And I made some adjustments here to the syllabus, to the schedule of the syllabus. Okay, I changed the date of exam 3. I changed it from November 18th to November 23rd. We might need to change this date too, you know, maybe we do it on the December 9th, the last day of class. And then the final exam is going to be a week later. Okay. So the final exam is going to be... It's going to be two hours only. Everybody has to be logged in at the same time. Uh, everybody has to be logged in between 5.30 and 7.30. Okay. It's going to be different from the partial exam. The partial exam, you have a 24-hour window. The final exam, no, you don't have a 24-hour window. It's going to be from 5.30 to 7.30. Okay. What's that? The, the final? Similar. 15, you know, 15 questions, similar. It's two hours long, right? Yeah. So... Well, I can, yeah, I can I can draw something like for you, Thanks. like that for you. Thanks. Okay, but do you remember you have to have a, a, a webcam, right, and logged into a, a a website that I'm gonna give you. Okay, I'm gonna use my own Zoom account. Okay, now let's go here. Let's see, thirty-seven. Let's go to the notes. Let's see where it start. I forgot to bring one to. Yeah, I forgot to get my my actual notes. Okay, so those. Okay, what are we doing here? Collisions in elastic. Ah, okay, I didn't finish that, remember? The genetic, what we're doing was the genetic equation for inelastic collision. That's where we stopped. We stopped it here. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to put a... Okay, so what I'm doing here, just to refresh your mind, we're still doing 1D collisions, one-dimensional collisions. But I'm going to do the most generic case for one-dimensional inelastic collision. Mass 1 and 2, both of them have initial velocity v not 1, v not 2. And I want to find a, a relationship between the final kinetic energy and the initial kinetic energy. That's what I want to do. Okay, so I found the final kinetic energy. I know that this one is the initial kinetic energy. I'm going to write them down side by side. So, and I'm going to start here. Insert. Page break. And today is 11, 4, 21. 11, 0, 4, 21. Okay, that's the initial kinetic energy. That's the final kinetic energy. Let's see if we can... No, not this one. Here we go, not this one, but this one here. Okay, so let's go ahead and expand what you have here. We're going to have
okay this one also is going to be square and V naught one square, we're gonna have V naught two square, and then you're gonna have a, a cross term with V naught one and V naught two. And M1 and M2. Because this is one dimension. Let's uh, assume that V naught one and V naught two are greater than zero, okay? Assume Assume they're both, assume V naught 1 greater than V naught 2 and greater than 0, okay? Let's assume that. Make things simpler so you do not have to worry about dot products being negative. So, V naught 2 is ahead of, uh, mass 2 is ahead of mass 1, but it's moving slower than mass 1, okay? So here you go, here's mass 2, here's mass 1, right? Mass 2 is moving slower than mass 1, so mass 1 can catch up with mass 2 to undergo a an inelastic collision. Make sense? That was all about. We could also have done them moving towards each other. If you're going to do moving them towards each other, then V naught 1 would be positive and V naught 2 would be negative. Okay? I don't want this add this complication. You can do this there, there at home on your own. Okay? And now we're going to have this cross term here which is going to be twice M1, M2 V not one, V not two. Not one something like that, and now I can get rid of this square on the outside parenthesis. It's just a regular square. Here we go. And let's break it down. Uh, I believe we have a half here. Yeah, I lost a half in the way, right? Here we go. So let's break down what we have here. energy so I'm gonna break it down in three different terms you know what I'm gonna do like that I'm gonna take advantage of this one makes things simpler for me here you go the first term is this one no need for the half because we already have it the second term is the, the other term is this one those are the square terms and then I have to worry about the cross term. Huh. Interesting. What's going on here? Okay. Let's try. Okay. Now let's try it again. Yep. I got it. 
and then we have the cross term which has exactly the same denominator do you see that this term is this one this term is this one this term here is this one here okay what we have here is kinetic initial kinetic energy divided by m1 plus m2 let's uh, i'm going to rewrite that let's see if i can rewrite that in this in the same line let's see if we have enough space and then what i have here you know is the initial kinetic energy divided by m1 plus m2 we can eliminate the two here because the two this half here already comes with the kinetic energy with the initial kinetic energy there okay we this term also can be eliminated and now i'm going to cancel this two with this two okay so the question is whether kef is greater equal or less than ke not that's the question okay that's the question that's a fair question to ask unless i did a mistake unless i came up and i made a mistake you know final kinetic energy is supposed to be less than initial kinetic energy why is that you can think uh, about that in the following way you know when those two masses collide and they stick to one another, some of the energy is, lo is, is, lost, is lost into the bounding of the two objects, okay? By bounding, by, by having those two objects bound to one another, you spend some energy to bind them, okay? That's, what, that's how you should interpret that. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get my favorite software. Let me get that. Because this, this equation, this, this, you know, this uh, thing is too much lecture. I'm gonna do that in my algebraic manipulator. Mm, here you go, this one. That's too much for me. Okay, so here we go. Kinetic energy half. M, uh, M1. B not 1. Oops. Not 1. Square half m2 b not 2 is squared whoa put like that i'm going to do the derivation all over again to make sure i didn't make any mistake okay go final is v final one v final two is square let's not forget that v final one is equal to v final two because it's an inelastic collision and from the conservation of linear momentum right also initial momentum is m1 times v not 1 plus m2 times oops times oops underscore v no v not 2 
I'm just repeating the, the derivation again. Make sure I, I didn't get anything wrong. Okay, v final one, v final two. Don't forget v final two is equal to v final one, right? From uh, we have conservation of linear momentum. That's lowercase p. We go. And we are going to get what we get for the final one. We are going to substitute the final one in my kinetic energy right in here. Hopefully, I didn't make any mistake, right? So here we go. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if I made a mistake there. I'm starting to suspect that I made a mistake in the derivation last time. The final, ba ba ba. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, doesn't look like I made a mistake. That's. Uh, I'm gonna do better than that. I'm going to collect. So you don't have that mess that you you saw coming. Okay, the final right in here, and we are going to expand. Oh, oh, we go. I will gonna factor this guy back so we can. No, I hate when he does that. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> do you see that? All that mass inside is just a zero. You know, I do not know why he does that. Instead of simplifying everything from the very beginning. Not every computer program are is ideal, right? Now I can simplify, just like I did before, right? Yeah, just exactly what I did before, right? Nothing wrong with what I did. Okay, and what else can I do? We're gonna do the following. We're gonna come up with a with a statement. Oh, what did I do here? We're gonna come up with a statement. You know, we're gonna ask if uh, k k e F is greater than K K E not. Let's see if it's greater. If it's true, we're gonna get something reasonable. If it's not true, if it's false, we're gonna get something unreasonable. Right? So here you go. I'm gonna substitute K E and T K E final and K E not. I could do that, uh, and like I said, I could have done that in the other software, but it would be too much work for me to do that. So I'd rather do that here. Uh, can I do something else? No, I can't. Yeah, there's no way I can simplify this left side here. Okay. There's no way I can simplify this left side. So let's go ahead and expand it. Okay, uh -huh. we have, oh, wait a minute, there's a simplification we can make before we, could, we do that. Yeah, we can, we can cancel the two, right? Let's cancel the two first. Collect, and I'm going to get this two here, pass to the other side, so it cancels, okay, here you go. Now we got a good shape. Now I can expand it. Wow, it's taking so long. Shouldn't. Come on, man. Oh, God, he's going to crash on me.
I just bought this software. I bought, I paid like two hundred dollars for it. <laughs> and have some bug. Then those guys they don't get in the phone line with me, you know. <laughs> to, uh. <laughs> Okay, um, there are other bugs in the software that, uh, uh, okay, so while he does that, you know, I, I'm going to switch here to my Word document, okay, and uh, maybe we, we can finish that here until he resolves this problem, right? Uh, I'm not going to do this through this way, I'm not going to do this through this way, I'm just going to you know, I'm going to just only ask if uh, KEF is greater than KE naught. And let's see if we find something that's not... Like I told you, know, KEF should be less. Okay? KEF should be... Oh, wait a minute. I did something wrong here. Uh, no. Oh, yeah. I'm in the wrong place. Here you go. Instead of doing this way, you know, I'm just going to gonna ask if KEF is greater than KE naught. And if you get something that's not reasonable, let's see, it's still resolving, yeah. Still didn't resolve the problem. Okay, doesn't look like I can rely on that software. Okay, so here you go. Let's see if it's if it's true or not, this inequality. Okay. okay, so we go ahead and collect this one and place it here. And then we collect this one and place it here. Every now and then I'm going to watch the other software to see if... Uh, Never know how long it takes for those guys to resolve this. Yeah, see, that's still not responding. Okay, so I'm going to, right? I'm asking if uh, final kinetic energy is greater than initial. You already know that, I uh, already told you that it's supposed to be less, right? But the, the equation there is so difficult to interpret that we do not know for sure whether it's greater, equal, or smaller. I can cancel that out here. And we can cancel this one. And then we can cancel this one here. Next. Okay. And I'm going to pass uh, what I can do here is just go back to the relation we had before. Remember the relation we had before? Or, let's see. No, even better. Okay, I'm going to pass this one. Not yet. Here you go. I'm going to pass this one to the other side. Open parenthesis. So that's a technique in mathematics, okay? We make an assumption and verify whether the assumption is reasonable or not. So that's the assumption that I'm making. I'm making that the I'm making the assumption that uh, final kinetic energy is greater than initial kinetic energy. If this assumption makes sense, you're going to get a inequality at the end. That makes sense. If the assumption is not doesn't make sense, then you're going to get an inequality that makes sense. That does not make sense. Okay, so here you go. So what else do we have to do? Let's... Uh, what you have here is what? I'm going to expand this one. Okay. And 
and what we have here is going to be what I pasted here. No, I didn't want to go through this trouble. That's why I was... Oh, okay, the software quit. See that? <laughs> it's the software quit. Before, right in here. So it resolved, resolved the problem by itself, by quitting it. By quitting itself. Okay. Did I miss something here? <laughs> yeah, okay. Ah, it looks like I, I have something wrong here. Let me see. Yeah, looks like there's something wrong here that I didn't pick up before. Yeah, okay, yeah. See that? Do you see a mistake here? Uh, nobody saw that mistake, right? It's supposed to be a mon square. Okay, this one is supposed to be M2 square. Okay, make sense? Okay, that's what it's supposed to be. Okay, now it makes sense. Okay, see M1 square here. Uh, this one's supposed to be M1. Oh, here you go. All the mistakes are all, all over the place. Let's see here M1 square. Oh no, that's M2 square. M2 square here. Remember, remind me to, to change that, okay? The first one there. So that's why I like to use that algebraic manipulator software. So I don't end up making this type of mistakes. M2 square, yeah. And M2 square here. I don't see, okay, I don't need that one. I can erase that. Okay, now I have to fix this one here. M1 square. So that's uh, how did I detect this mistake? I detected this mistake by doing dimensional analysis. Okay, that's how I detected this mistake. So that's the right one. Okay, now we can proceed. Let me see if my software... Yeah, he didn't save any of that stuff that we that we are doing, right? Let's close it. Okay, let's see if we can proceed now. All right? Okay, I'm going to expand this guy here. It's going to become M1 square, M2 square, M1 square, M2, M1. All right, here we go. I'm going to expand this one as well. It's going to become M2 square, M1, M2. Here you go. And let's see. I have a cross term here. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, oh man, that's something wrong here. They're ending up being equal to each other. Did I do something wrong here? Let's see, M1. Okay, we can, we can. Okay, let's continue. Uh, hopefully, I didn't make a mistake. I'm starting to suspect this, uh, this solution, this result. Let's see. Okay, what we have here is this term. Okay, what we have here is this term ah okay okay 
And now, what we're going to do here? Yeah, that's, that's okay. It's, it's okay. Okay, the right side is different from the left side. Okay, so we are, we're in safe territory here. Oh, don't want to do that. Getting there. Yep. So this term here cancel out. This is other term here, right? This other term here cancels out. This this all oh, other term here. Right? Huh, we can eliminate this one. Interesting. We don't need this positive sign. We don't need this positive sign. Okay. So let's go to the next step. M1, M2. Cancels out with M1, M2. And then we are left with this inequality here. The question is whether this inequality is true or not. Do you see how I did that? The question is whether this inequality is true or not. I'm going to prove to you that this inequality is not correct. Doesn't hold. And there is a very easy way of doing that. How do we do that? We pass the left side to the right side. And I'm going to put it right in here in between so it becomes clear to you what's going on. Okay? And let's not forget, you know, my initial assumption is, is stating that this relation that you see here is less than zero. Okay? I'm going to here write it with the less than zero on the other side. Oh. So the question is whether this is true or not. Okay. Whether this is true or not. Do you recognize this relation right in here? Yes or no? Do you recognize this relation right in here? Huh? You should say yes. I, I don't hear anything. What you have here is the square of the difference. Right? That's what you have here. What you have here in the left side let me write that down. It's something like that. I'm going to copy this guy. Um, I'm going to put it like that. It's something like that. Okay. I'm gonna put the square there. Hmm. There you go. Make sense? Is this inequality correct or not? He's telling me that the square of a number, of a real number, is less than zero. That's what he's telling us. Is that true? The square of a real number less than zero? The square of a real number is always greater than zero. Okay? The above, I'm going to write it down here. The above relation states that the square of a real number, you know, V naught 1 minus V naught 2, 
is less than zero, which is incorrect, which is incorrect. This number here can be less than zero. This number here can be negative. But when you square a negative number, a negative number becomes positive, right? So no matter what you have here is positive or negative, it's going to get a positive number. Okay? Which is incorrect. Consequently, your initial assumption, your initial assumption, you know, which was this one here, is also incorrect. What you see here is consequence of the initial assumption. Assumption is also incorrect. Which implies which implies that the initial kinetic energy kinetic energy is greater than the final one. Okay? So every time that you have an inelastic collision the final kinetic energy is going to be less than the initial kinetic energy. Every time. We can also, let's see if we can do that as well. It's possible to find out the ratio of those two. Let me see if I can do that. Uh, let's take a look here. I'm going to do, I'm going to try to do that with this software again. Hopefully it's not gonna quit on us. You know, half M oh half M one B not one oh C not C not one C square plus half M two B not to this square. That's the final kinetic energy. The e, the initial kinetic energy. The final kinetic energy is what's that? Half. Right. We have m one m one plus m two. downstairs and then what else do we have that is multiplied by is that m1 v not one square right plus let's let's make sure that's what it is i'm just recalling by of my memory here v not 2 is square. Right, let's go back to our... And then let, let me... Let me save this guy before he quits on us. And you don't lose the work. Okay, collision. Here we go. Now I can erase this one. Let's make sure everything is what's supposed to be. Uh, final kinetic energy, here you go. This is the final kinetic energy, see that? What I wrote there is exactly that, right? So, yep, no problem. Okay, so let's see if we can get a simple result for the ratio of those two kinetic energies. What time is that? 5.38, we still have time. Uh, maybe, let's see here. Oh, oh no, wait a minute. Oh, 
Oh yeah. Uh huh. I put the square in the wrong place, right? Nobody saw that, folks. Gotta pay more attention. I put the square in the wrong place. You see, that's what we call the bugging. No matter how experienced you are, you always make a mistake. Okay, so let's see if I can do anything about that. <laughs> what I wanted to do, you know what? I'm gonna do the inverse. Mm, you know, no, let's leave this way. Let's see what, what we get. So let's see if we can get a simple solution. Yeah, let's leave this way. Here you go. Kinetic energy. Good. The two didn't cancel out. Hmm. Yeah, the two was supposed to cancel out. Yeah, it didn't cancel out because I didn't put the two in evidence. Let's put it in evidence now, and hopefully it's gonna cancel out. You don't wanna go through the trouble. Here go. Here go. Okay, now the two canceled out automatically, right? So we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we cannot get anything simpler than that, okay? Unfortunately. Uh, let's go expand. Expand. Okay, we have here this term. I'm gonna put next to the other one. We have here this term. I'm going to collect. Yeah. And we have here this term here. Okay. Okay, this is equal to this one, this this is equal to this one, this is equal to this one. And now you know we have those those two terms here. Well that's the best we can do. We cannot do anything simpler than that. Let me see if I can, let's see here. Let me see, I think we can do something. Yeah, let me see. We can, I, we can do the following. I can, okay. I can sum. Yeah, okay, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to sum and subtract this term that you see here. Sum and subtract, and hopefully we get we're getting a better result. Here you go. Sum and subtract the same term, so nothing changes, right? So what you have here is exactly the same as what you have here, right? And now I'm gonna go. Collect that, and then we have that. Uh, uh, here you go. Let me get uh, this one factored. Oh, let's see. Oh boy, I hate that. Oh uh, yeah, he, he complicates things. What a shame. You didn't used to do that, you know. I don't know why, why he's doing it now. See that he put an imaginary term here. Why he does that, I don't have a clue. But like I said, he didn't used to, to, to do things like that. I don't know why he does that now. He must have changed something in the programming of the software. Sometimes. And it's getting more and more complicated. Oh, gosh. Expand. Yeah, I, I'm not going to mess with that. Anyway. Anyway, what you have here is the same as what you have downstairs, okay? I'm going to call that A. Oh. A, okay. Out. A, okay, you can do downstairs. 
But I will go downstairs. Oh. Oh. Interesting. Okay, now it should be. No. Huh. It's exactly the same way. It's not uh, substituting. Interesting. We are supposed to write that down, this one downstairs as A2. I do not know why it's not doing that. Yeah, should I? Oh, strange. I, I'm working with this uh, student that uh, is doing a circuit, an electronic circuit, and he's using a software. Ah, huh, even this one he is not uh, accepting. That's so odd. Well, whatever it is, I'm gonna put that A. Okay, you go. <laughs> okay, that's what. Uh, and this one I'm gonna call B. So I'm working with a student too that has something similar, uh, you know, has a, has a simulation software for circuits. And he's having the same problem with a simulation software circuit. The circuit you know, doesn't work as advertised the way it's supposed to work. Yeah, okay, so that uh, what uh, that one I'm, I'm getting here. Okay. Okay. So this ratio is what? This ratio is the number one plus something else here. Oops. Something else here that is the let me try to factor it. Yeah, I factored the wrong way. I hate that. Okay, I'm gonna put the factor manually. Here you go. The factor is like that. You know, they're not supposed to be doing that with the software. It's because they <laughs> they didn't program the software properly. But even though you know they do that, I still like the software. Zero, one, um, V, zero, two, square, okay? That's what this one's supposed to be. If you expand it, you get exactly what you get there. Okay, okay. But for some reason it's not uh, it's not substituting there. I don't know why. Huh? Strange. Let's try it again. Yeah, see that? Huh? Looks like my. Uh, let's try. Either the symbols are different, or or there is something wrong here with the software. Maybe, let's see, how to simplify, maybe, let's see here. Must be something else that I, I didn't quite, yeah, it, it, it might be something else. Let me see, this V here, maybe, I see it was defined. But anyway, you got the idea, right? So that's variable. yeah, that's not the problem. The problem is something else, I cannot figure out. But this guy here is supposed to be zero. I do not know why it is not doing the zero for me. Okay, so B is equal to this square, and A is equal to the other square. Okay, A is greater than B. A is greater than B. Equal, negative. Okay, because A is greater than B, this ratio here that you see is less than 1. B over A is less than 1, okay? But, uh, uh, you know, what else? K, another way of proving to you the KE not... Here you go. What you have here? B divided by A is a positive number. Less than 1. M2, M1 is a positive number as well, okay? So what's, K, what's this ratio is all about? This ratio is 1 plus a positive number. Because this ratio is, uh, is 1 plus a positive number, okay? We can here write that as... Greater, 
greater than 1. Okay? And k naught is greater than kef. That's what I want to show to you. That's just another way of doing the same thing. Either by making, uh, by starting with an incorrect assumption or by analyzing this ratio here that you found. Okay? So, any questions about that? Let's go and take attendance. Third day, okay, let's. Huh. I took attendance last time, didn't I? For some reason I don't see attendance. Oh, no, no. The third was yesterday. Okay, good. Yeah, Daniel Abraham, are you there? No. Mario Acevedo. Are you there, Mario? No. Harun, Musa, Genesis Bell, no, Jennifer Camarillo, Vincent D'Aluizio, Robert Faust, Pedro Flores, okay. Lawrence Flores, Alexander Garcia, Fungham, there. Brian Herrera, no. Brian Inez. Athena. No, Athena. Jesus Lep. Cassandra Martinez. Dylan Martinez. Henry Martinez. Leonardo Melgar. No. Rafael Mercado. Raymond Miramontes. No. Jaime Mondragon. Alexis Nigret, Marco Antonio Partida, Armando Perez, Abraham Perez, no, Nicolas Pisano, there, Ramon Quintana, Albert Ramirez, no, Robert Ramirez, Albert Ramirez, okay, Ali, David Sompaxley, Antonio Vega, Kenneth Villa Gomez, Patrick Vilovazov, Nolan Williams, and good. We are in good shape here. I'm going to stop my recording here for now. And let's go for our break. It's 5.51 right now. Let's uh, break until 6.06. Break. Six oh six PM. Six oh seven. You know, run out of one one more minute. Yeah. Remind me to start with one D elastic collision. Okay. Definition of elastic collision. Definition of elastic collision. I'm gonna even if specify it's not just elastic collision, but it's totally elastic collision, okay? And then you have partially elastic collision. Let's stick with totally elastic collision. The the two extremes. Inelastic collision, totally elastic collision, and then everything else in between. Okay? Inelastic collision, the two masses ends up colliding and attach it to each other. Totally elastic collision, the masses collide, they don't attach to one another, but, and what else? Kinetic energy is conserved. Kinetic energy is conserved here, kinetic energy is not conserved, is not conserved here. But in both cases, momentum is conserved. Okay? In both cases, momentum is conserved. And then we have everything else in between. Okay? Partially, kinetic energy is partially conserved. Here's, here's you, where you lose the most kinetic energy. That's why you lose here. The most kinetic energy you lose during an inelastic collision, okay? And uh, you don't lose any kinetic energy during a totally elastic collision, okay? So those are the two uh, definitions of totally elastic collision. 
basically two masses bounces off bounce off each other and kinetic energy is conserved so we have these two extreme cases you know inelastic collision where the two masses collide with one another and become attached after the collision and totally oh in this case in this case, you lose the most. In this case, you lose the most kinetic energy. And totally elastic collision. The two masses two masses bounce off each other and kinetic energy energy is conserved so everything you know every other pos uh, everything else every other possibility for Every you know, there uh, not every other possibility. Every remaining possibility. Every remaining possibility. The remaining possibilities. The other remaining possibilities fall within these two types of collision. Of collisions. With the exception, by the way, with the exception, with the exception of uh, explosions, right? Where this final kinetic energy is greater. Don't forget, final kinetic energy is greater than the initial. Kinetic energy is greater. And the initial one. I'm gonna give you a an illustration, a little movie here of uh, let me see this one. Maybe it's this one. Let's see here. No, that's an inelastic. Let me see if I can get elastic here. Okay, that's an elastic one. Okay. This one here is an elastic one. The two masses are the same. The first mass is moving towards the first, the second one. This is a one-dimensional collision. I can tell you what's going to be the result when you have two masses equal to the same. Okay. We have this head-on collision. It's a one-dimensional. That's why it's a one-dimensional collision. It's a head-on collision. They collide with one another. The second mass stops the first one, and the second one takes off. Okay. I'm gonna put one more frame here to my movie. You go. So we see this type of behavior in the pool table. If you play pool and you know what you're doing on the table, okay, we see this type of behavior in the pool table. You go collides and they're oh, hmm. okay. This one is supposed to be before. In the pool table, what we have, we have balls of same masses. Let me do something else here, so we can get. Uh, I'm gonna put a, a blank slide. Here you go. All right? No, no, I want. I want a blank slide. I didn't copy it. 
Here you go. Now I put a blank slide here. Okay, here you go. You can do that. If you know what you're doing, you propel the white ball in a head-on head -on collision with the second one. And so if you do everything right, if you get a head-on collision, the first ball is going to come to a stop, the second one is going to take off, right? Ah, <laughs> that's something else I'm going to show you. Okay, so that's the type of collision I'm going to study right now. In this type of collision, kinetic energy is conserved. And because we have a second condition, conservation of momentum and conservation of energy, we have a problem that's more difficult to solve, mathematically speaking. In the first case, we had only one equation, because only momentum gets conserved. So, mathematically speaking, inelastic collisions are easier to treat mathematically than totally elastic collision. That's why I like to treat inelastic collisions first. Okay? So, let's go through the derivation of totally elastic collision. In the case of totally elastic collision, not only momentum is conserved, but also kinetic energy is also conserved. Now, you saw that there is no conservation of kinetic energy, right, in the inelastic collision, right? So, but... Uh, so, equations. Initial momentum is equal to final momentum. Right? If you're dealing with two masses, initial moment of one is equal to plus initial moment of two is equal to final moment of one plus final moment of two. But we have this other condition too that brings the number of equations to two. And the larger the number of equations, the more difficult it is to treat the problem. That's the whole idea. Right? So, if you are having problems solving a physics problem, maybe that's because you didn't. There are too many equations. There are a system of equations that is very difficult to treat mathematically. Here we go. Kinetic energy. Find out that's the condition that we have. Here you go. And I'm going to clean that up, the sink, to show you that we have only two equations. Because it's a one-dimensional type of collision, the vectorial equation that you see in there is just one scalar equation. That's okay. So let us treat the simplest of all Totally elastic collision problem. Simplest example. Simplest example of totally elastic collision. One D collision. M one equal to M two. V not one greater than zero, V not two equal to zero. Okay, we're gonna do that now. So here we go. I'm gonna get those equations here because the second mass is at rest. Initial momentum of the second mass is going to be zero. I do not know if the final moment, you know, I, I told you what was the final result, right? But I, but if you're doing that without that knowledge, I, I can tell you that I do not know what the final moment is. And because it's a one-dimensional type of problem, I can eliminate the vectorial symbol here. Like that. 
because the second mass is at rest. Like I said, I still do not know if the first mass is going to come to a stop or not. So let's keep this equation like that. I'm going to substitute the full the full equation for the momentum. Okay. M1 and then it becomes D1. M1 and then it becomes C, final one. M2, then it becomes B, final two. Okay, here I'm going to get copy and paste from what I had before. Here we go. All I need that. Don't forget that M1 equal to M2, right? So I still didn't do that simplification. Here we go. Final one. And M2. B not two. Okay, two. Uh, I'm not gonna put any space in between here. We go. What's gonna be next? M1 equal to M2 equal to M, right? So there will be a simplification that we can do, but before we simplify the masses. I will write down the here I'm going to simplify the two. I, I am in a position to do that. After doing the simplification of the two, then I'm going to do the substitution of M1 and M2. Okay. And we go the next step in the next step. We can cancel the masses. Cancel, 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 and cancel. I'm going to highlight what's known and what is unknown. I'm just going to highlight what is unknown, okay? What's known, I'm going to leave without highlighting what's bold faced is the hey wait a minute i made a mistake here right watch me out folks don't let me make those mistakes what i put in bold face are the unknown uh, values go Software, you know, help you decrease the error, right? The mistakes that you make. But every now and then we end up making mistakes anyway. So we have two equations with two unknowns. Can you solve the system of equations? Yes or no? Here we have, I'm going to write, type it here. We have two equations. These two unknowns. So, can you solve the system or not? Can you solve the system or not? Well, the answer is, in general, you can, provided. In general, you can, provided, but, uh, but there is a condition. Provided the two equations are linearly independent. Okay, you can, let me see, not in general, you can, yeah, you can, provided if the two equations are linearly dependent, then you cannot solve it. 
So what do we have to do? Okay, we have to, to solve this system of equations. There are a bunch of techniques out there, right? At least three, three mathematical techniques. The one that I like to do is the one that we eliminate one of the unknowns. Okay, let's start by eliminating one of the unknowns. I will call that, I'm going to eliminate VF2. And by eliminating, I mean I'm going to write VF2 in terms of the other two parameters. Okay? Once I do that, I substitute VF2 right in here. I can do that in my software as well. Once you do that, now, you know, I'm going to substitute right in here. Here you go. Here you go. And now that we got rid of this first equation, that now that we use this first equation here, we don't need that to solve for V1. See that? Now, what was two equations under two unknowns become a single equation with a single unknown. Okay? So, with this one, you can solve for VF1. So, let's go ahead and write it down. Here you go. VF1 is going to be squared as well. But then we must have and then we don't we do have the cross term v f one v not one we go and now we go okay I'm going to you know I'm not gonna use use this one here because we don't need it at least now but we're gonna need that later okay this equation here we're gonna need that later but for now just believe that we have just one equation for one unknown which is gonna solve half of the problem let's go let's try let's see what else we can do next step v naught square cancels out to v naught square All right V not one square. V final one is square combines with V final one is square. And we can go for the next step, which it is to uh, put the V final one as in evidence. Two v final one in evidence. That's what I'm gonna do. Here you go. I'm gonna put this one here. V final one here. And v not one there. Two is different of zero. We are sure about that, right? So we can eliminate from that. But we are not sure if the final one is, is different of zero. We do not sure. So don't go this additional step. That's when people get stuck. Okay? So here you go. We gotta look at this equation carefully. Stop and analyze. Don't uh, try to solve the problem in a hurry anymore. There's a time to do hard work, hard mathematical work, and then there are time for you to relax, look at the equation, talk to the equation. Think about the equation. Okay? Okay, so if, here you go, if VF1 equal to zero, what does it mean if VF1 is equal to zero? Then we solve our problem. Our problem. Okay. 
But let's see if Vf1 is equal to 0 or not. Let's see if Vf1 is equal to 0. I want you to substitute Vf1 right in here in that the very first equation. Okay. So there are two conditions. Okay, let me write in a different way. There are two conditions. There are two possible solutions for the above equation. Okay? When people see something like that, you know, you got to be careful about that. Okay? When people see something like th at that, the temptation is to cancel VF1, okay? Big mistake. That's the temptation. Don't uh, don't do that. Watch out, okay, for those, for this type of uh, temptation, okay. When you do that, you are assuming that VF one is different of zero. That when you do something like that, when you do something like that, okay. But uh, you may end up making a mistake. Okay. What if VF one is equal to zero? then you cannot cancel this guy because you're going to be saying that uh, what you have here is going to be 0 divided by 0, which is indeterminate number, okay? Okay, so there are two possibilities. Two possible solutions for the above equation. One, the first one. Either Vf1 is equal to 0 or or This one here is equal to zero. Two possible solutions. Or let's see which one is the reasonable one. Either. Okay. And by the way, they are not either. Let's take a look uh, at the first one and let's see if it makes sense. And then we we'll take a look at the second one and, uh, and see if it makes sense. Okay. First case. First case. If if the first case applies, right? If the first case applies. Then we use this very first equation that we eliminate at the beginning to find the final velocity of two. Okay? Then Vf2 is equal to Vf V not one. Okay? Then, if the second case applies, if instead, if instead the second case applies, oh, then what we have. We have equal to V not the final one is equal to V not one and and oops and the final two is zero. Let's analyze what's going on here. And I'm gonna analyze that by looking at a movie. My PowerPoint movie. Two possible solutions. Okay? Two possible solutions. Let's see which one is the correct one. Two possible mathematical solutions. Let's see which one is the correct one, right? I'm telling you about this first one, right? If the final one is zero, which results 
in v final 2 equal to v not 1 or v final 1 is equal to its initial velocity and v final 2 is 0. Okay? So let's take a look what's happening here. Here you go. That is going to be v final 1 equal to 0. Okay? Here you go. It comes, mass 1 collides with mass 2, comes to a full stop, and mass 2 takes off with the same velocity that the mass 1 had initially. Okay? That was the first solution is all about. Make sense? Does it make sense? From the physical point, sounds like it makes sense, right? I'm going to even put zero here. I'm not going to put a question mark. I'm going to put zero here. Because now we know it's zero. Now let's look at the second solution. Let's see. This one should be the first solution. Let's see here. Yeah, that's still the first solution, right? Just like we had before. It's just different balls. Just different masses. Here you go. Initial velocity of 1. Initial velocity of 2 is 0. That is an interaction. First mass propels the second one. The second mass stops the first one. Because they have the same mass. Okay? Now let's look at the second solution that I told you. The second solution is what? Go back again. Here you go. Don't forget what we got for the second solution there. The second solution. The final velocity of 1 is equal to initial velocity of 1. And the final velocity of 2. What was the initial velocity of 2, by the way? Do you remember what was the initial velocity of 2? Go ahead. Go back to your notes. What was the, 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 the mass 2? What was the mass 2 doing initially? Was it moving before? No, it was at rest. So I'm, what I'm saying here is that after the, sec, after the collision, this second case implies that the second mass stays at rest, remains at rest. Okay? That's what this second mathematical solution is implying here. Okay? So there are two possibilities here. There are three possibilities here. Either the first mass is just a ghost, it passes through the second mass and keep on moving. Can you picture that? With the same velocity. Okay? Even the first mass is a ghost and moves away. Or the, f the first mass is a little bit displaced from the second one and just pass by it without any collision. Okay? Or the second mathematical solution is not physical. Three possibility solutions. Two three possible physical interpretations for this solution, okay? So here you go. Either the first mass is like a ghost and pass by the second one, okay? Without any change in the velocity. Or the second mass, the first mass, you know, is displaced by, you know, is a little bit displaced and doesn't collide at all with the second one and pass by. Or the mathematical solution that you have is not a physical one. So we have two possible solutions, right? So the right one should be what? The right one should be that uh, one that we saw before. Right? The right one. The right solution should be this one. And again, that's exactly what we see in the pool table, right? One dimensional collision. They collide. The first mass comes to a stop. The second mass takes off with the same velocity as the first mass. The first, the same initial velocity of the first mass. What time is that? 640? Did you get the idea? Okay, so that's when you should stop and start sinking. Okay, we got two solutions. Why did we get two solutions? We got two solutions because the equation is a quadratic one. Here you go. What you have here is a quadratic equation. A quadratic equation that has two solutions. Okay? That's why we have those two possible mathematical solutions. Because we ended up with a quadratic equation here. And you have to be wise enough to pick up which one is going to be the physical one, the physical solution. That's one possible problem. We can go for others, too. You know, we can have, like, different masses. Okay. We can have different masses there to, to make things mathematically complicated. Yeah, we can do that. And let's see if we can do that. Okay, yeah, let's do... We have what 
uh, 10 more minutes to go. Maybe we can do that. And the next case, simple. Let's see here. Next. Next, next level of difficulty. Next difficulty level. M1 different of M2. Next difficulty level. Difficulty. Totally elastic collision with M1. Totally 1D elastic collision. Totally 1D elastic collision with with M1 different of M2 different of M2 it, and by the way it doesn't have to be the second mass doesn't have to be at rest it can it can also be you know can also be moving okay uh, there is a little interesting trick. Let's see. Let me see if I can do that here for you. We have uh, very little time. I'll try to do it before we run out of time. A nice mathematical trick. Here we go. And oh, by the way, you know, make sure you pick up my mistakes. Okay, I'm making mistakes here, folks. Don't let me do mistakes. You go M2. It's gonna be M2 here as well. Okay. Two, a system of two equations. We want to find out the final one, the final two. We know M1, M2, V0, 1, V0, 2, okay? That's what we know. So there is this nice trick that we can use to, show, to solve a seemingly, seemingly difficult problem, okay? Don't forget, because this thing is a quadratic equation in, velo in the velocity, it may be really challenging to, to solve it. So what's the trick? I'm going to show you what the trick is. The trick is combining the M1 and M2 in a single side of your equation. Okay? So what do we have to do? We have to pass the term that contains M1 and M2 to the same side of the equation. When we do something like that, you know, it uh, greatly simplifies the solution of your problem. It's an unexpected simplification. Those unexpected simplifications that we only find out when someone tells us or when we work hard enough to find it. Oh, what did I do here? Huh. Yeah, so, oh, yeah, here you go. Yeah, I erased the M2 and I did a note, see? Watch me out, folks. Don't let me make those mistakes. Here we go. So that's the important trick. 
So remember that when you are when you start working there at NASA or JPL laboratory at Microsoft, right? Remember about those little tricks that simplify your life. Facebook, Apple, right? Some of you are going to work for them, right? Google. <laughs> I asked a friend of mine there in the Bay Area if it was easy to get a job with Apple and Facebook and uh, Google. He said it was very difficult. He's an electrical engineer. Okay, so here you go. We're going to put those guys into oh, evidence going on here yeah let's do that again i wish i was using a, a desktop do the same for the right side And you're going to see what's going to happen. This, uh, and then we do the same here. Uh, am I? Wait a minute. Yeah, okay. I'm not skipping anything, right? You go. M1 You know what, it's easier if I copy this side here and paste in there and just change the indexes And no, it's not easy Better <laughs> let's, not, let's not take this risk Okay, go Here you go. One more. Well, we can do something else here. There's one more thing that we can do here. Okay, and that's part of the trick. First trick, the first trick is to lump up. At, oh, 650 already. Yeah? Oh, okay. So let's stop now. But the first trick was to lump up as, uh, the terms with the same mass. The second trick was to break down this square here. Okay? The difference of the squares. That's the second trick. It's not obvious, those things. But let's stop now. We're going to have our lab and we meet again next time.